Have you ever thought about creating a framer template? Yeah, me too. But for almost a year now, I thought this is very complex and it will take me at least two to three months to do. But as the great Amy Hoy once said, just fucking ship it. And this is what I did last week. And hey, turns out it's not that complex. This week, I created my first framer template. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do that too. Let's go. So as I started my career in consulting, I developed a strange love for structure. This is why I broke down this process into simple steps that you can follow too. Good news, there's only four of them. They are research, product design, product development, and sales and marketing. So let's dive right in. When I started developing, I first had a short moment of doubt. Is Framer actually the right platform to build upon? There's definitely a current hype around the platform and they are developing at an insanely fast speed. But there is still Webflow around the block. So I briefly looked into this and here are my top three reasons why I believe selling Framer templates is totally worth it. Point one, the gap between Framer and Webflow is closing. I pulled up Google Trends, which is great to analyze all kinds of topics. If you look at the number of queries for Webflow and Framer, you see that the gap is definitely closing. Point two, marketplace fees. To be listed on the official Webflow marketplace, you pay a 20% cut for every template you sell. And while this is probably still reasonable, Framer offers you to sell your templates on their marketplace entirely for free. And point three, competition. While Webflow is around for years and there are tons of templates out there, this whole ecosystem for Framer is still relatively young and my estimate is that there are still less than 1000 templates on the marketplace. With these points in mind, I went on to the second question. What kind of template should I build? I spent at least two hours Googling, trying to research the most popular template categories. Not only for Framer, but also for Webflow and WordPress. But it turns out there is no data on this shared publicly. This is why I went into manual mode and counted the templates listed on Framer Marketplace by category. And for you, as my dear followers, I hope you are, here is the list so you don't have to count. You can pause the video and take a closer look if you want to. I also found out from Framer's upload form that you can list your template in up to five categories. So with this information in mind, I decided to position my templates in some of the major categories, portfolio and business, and also include elements to get it, for example, into the blog category. From this, an image started to form in my mind that I wanted to build a template for small design agencies and freelancers looking to present themselves on the internet in the best way possible. With this idea in mind, I went into phase two, product design. Even though we all probably visit hundreds of websites per week, I would still suggest to take some dedicated time to look for best practices, as this will make your templates so much better. In addition, it's always good to understand what other templates are already offering. For this, I opened up a Figma file with a website frame and then went onto the internet to start looking for best practices and elements I like. I'm a huge fan of awards.com, SiteInspire and Dribbble to get some inspiration. So I used these sources and put all kinds of screenshots onto my Figma template. Then I went into designing my own template. I went on purpose for a very minimal and clean design with the intention that my template would be usable for as many agencies and freelancers as possible. You probably have your own design process in Figma already, but here are my top three web design tips for Figma. First one, always use a grid. This makes it so much easier to align stuff and so much more consistent. Point two, set up your font styles correctly. I know this is tedious, but this will save you so much time in web design later. And point three, Set up and stick to your color palette. Again, this will make your life just so much easier in development. One important thing to point out is the fact that Framer asks you in their template guidelines specifically that you don't include lorem ipsum or dummy text. Therefore, you have to get creative with the content of your website. Luckily, JetGPT can help and come up with basically everything from a creative name up to a full backstory of your agency. In terms of images, I'm a huge fan of Pexels collections and at the moment specifically of Cotton Bro Studio. I paste a link to them below. By using collections, you can be sure that you have plenty of images with a consistent style. Lastly, leveraging the power of Figma plugins will make your life so much easier. I used the user profile plugin for easy headshots and I was extremely pleased to find out that there are plugins to auto-generate logo walls, like UI logos. This was one of the best time savers I found throughout this process. It took me about one day to design the website before I went on to the next stage, product development. 
Let me start this section with something that was a huge eye-opener to me, the Figma Framer plugin. This has made it really easy to copy all my designs over to Framer. One thing that I noticed through the process is that you do yourself a huge favor if you directly start naming things properly. <laughs> I know I always don't do that, but hey, in this process I started and it really saved me tons of time. This is needed also as it's another guideline from Framer to get your template listed on their marketplace later on. Within Framer, I went through my regular design process and first built out my desktop website. Whenever possible, I used components to make my life easier. Afterwards, I went into animating everything as I noticed that several templates don't use animations. Next up, I dealt with responsiveness. Also make sure not to use too many breakpoints. Again, that's one of the requirements to get listed on the Framer Marketplace. It took me a while until I was happy with my homepage, but then I went on to designing the other pages. Here I run into one issue I really didn't like. If you want to build out a template including a blog, you need a CMS. Nevertheless, this is not included in Framer's starter plan and you need to upgrade to a higher plan for more than 150 bucks per year. And even if you do so, you get only one CMS collection. In my case, I originally planned to add CMS functionality for project showcases and for the blog, but I ended up doing it only for the blog as I wasn't keen to spend another 150 bucks for Framer's highest plan. After I built out everything, I added all the stuff in the site settings. Make sure not to forget details like the favicon or the social image. Also make sure that your site renders without issues. I had some nested links at first, but I found a good explanation how to solve it and I'll link that below in the description. Lastly, when I was almost finished, I watched this video by Framer University. Huge shout out to Nandy, he definitely had some details in mind I hadn't done yet. One was setting the alt text for all the images and the other one was the proper classification for sections and buttons. If you don't know how that works, watch Nanny's video, it's really good. Also, don't forget to assign the right cursor for every button. Two hours of nitty gritty work later, my template was ready to launch and I could move on to stage four, sales and marketing. As soon as you're ready to launch, go to the Framer website and find the submit button at the end of the template page. Or simply go to this link. There you'll find a type form and Framer themselves, they will guide you through the entire process pretty well. Just to manage expectations, you should plan at least an hour for this as they will ask you to create basically all the marketing copy and showcase pictures throughout the process. I used Figma again to create all the images and combine several screenshots together. What came in handy was Framer's own export functionality that you can use to create detailed shots of all the pages. When you are almost done with the process, you are asked to provide your lemon squeezy link. This is basically the shop platform that's used to collect money from buyers and send it to you. Lemon Squeezy is pretty cool as they operate as a so-called merchant of record and they take care of all the tech stuff on an international level. If you have no account yet, I suggest setting it up as soon as possible as it will take some days to get you verified. In order to create the Lemon Squeezy link for your website, I'll link this great video from Framer explaining how this works exactly. As soon as you hit submit, you're good to go. Using your Lemon Squeezy link, you can directly start selling your template on your own social media channels. After your template is verified, I also suggest to take a look into the option of selling your template to third parties. Framer lists some of them on their website directly, and I think that's pretty cool that you can not only sell it on their marketplace, but that you also have the option to go for third parties. And that's it. I hope I could show you that it's not too hard to build a sellable Framer template and it doesn't take too much of your time. I wish you best of luck and success with your own templates. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them below in the comments. If you liked this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. I'm on a mission to build a new digital product every week for one year. And I will share with you all the details, tips and tricks and revenues throughout the journey. So there is definitely a lot more to come. See you next week.